Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, Lab Sci Project. Um, in today's video, we would be uh, conducting um, a little experiment to separate uh, mixtures. We would be separating a mixture of uh, salt, sand, chalk, and iron fillings. Uh, I would be creating the mixture. Uh, first, we're gonna break up our chalk. I have um, some little piece of um, chalk sticks here. I'm gonna break it up into little bits in my mortar and uh, pistol. Okay, uh, mixtures tend to vary widely in composition, meaning that um, you can just dump a couple of uh, different items, different substances together uh, without really measuring the exact amount you have of each component in the mixture. Very much unlike um, compounds where the composition of the compound is fixed. In mixtures, the composition is not fixed. It varies widely, okay? And what do we mean by varying widely? It means I can, uh, without carrying out any uh, measurement in terms of um, noting the quantity of the component I'm using, okay? So I have some chalk. You notice I have not done any measurement in terms of knowing the mass of um, chalk I'm using. And we're gonna dump some salt into that and some sand. I have um, fine sand. Okay and some iron fillings. Okay, so, so right here we have um, a mixture of four different items, okay? Uh, those items include the chalk, uh, salt, sodium chloride salt to be precise, uh, iron fillings, and uh, sand. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> in order to separate them into their individual components, uh, I'll be making use of some of their physical properties. Remember, uh, mixtures are basically physical combination of two or more substances, okay? Um, in which case, the substances that you've combined did not chemically react. So, in that way, um, I can employ the use of um, their physical property to separate them, okay? so. Uh, first, I would like to separate, separate the iron because that is the easiest to uh, get out of the mixture. Now, what property of iron am I going to use, the iron filing? I know that iron is ferromagnetic, meaning that um, it has some magnetic property, and right here I have a magnet, so what I'm going to do is uh, place the magnet under the dish. Now, I usually advise do not place the magnet inside the mixture because uh, you would have um, a little bit of difficulty trying to remove the uh, iron filing from the magnet. So, here we go. So, I place the magnet underneath this dish and I try to move it around and you notice the iron fillings 
is attracted by the magnet while my salt, sand, and chalk, they are not magnetic. So that way I can separate the iron filling out of the mixture. Okay? So I keep doing this until I am satisfied that I have gotten rid of, um, I've, I've extracted the iron or separated the iron from the mixture. Okay, so here we are, we have iron there. I'm gonna repeat it again. So I'm going to keep repeating it until I am totally satisfied. You notice I still have some, some of the iron in here. Okay. I still have the iron in there. Alright, so that's the iron. So I keep repeating it until I am completely satisfied that I have no more iron left in the mixture. Okay, so that's the iron. I have a um, little bit of iron left there and let's give it one more go and see if we can still extract some more iron. Okay, so I believe that's the the last little bit of iron left. All right, so now we have our iron separated. I'm gonna set that aside. So, at this point we have uh, just three components of the mixtures, of the mixture left in here. So we have um, the chalk, the sand, and the salt. So next, we would try to uh, figure out a way to separate the salt, sand, and chalk. So I'm going to employ another physical property of one of the components I have in this mixture here. I know that the salt can readily dissolve in water. So what I'm going to do is I will transfer this into my beaker and then I'm gonna add water to the mixture. I know that the sand and the, the sand and the salt, I mean the sand and the chalk are insoluble, right? Meaning that they will not readily dissolve in water. Okay, so so if you look closely, if you look closely, you'll notice I have um, the sand and some of the chalk 
particles down there. So what I'm going to do is I will gently, I'm going to swirl and gently I will decount, I will decount the uh, <clears throat> part of the chalk that is in solution. That's why you have the water a little, uh, having this pinkish color. And then you notice that uh, the sand and the chalk seem to have settled, but they, they are slightly separated, right? So I can very well pick out some of the some of the chalk particles and you notice I you notice I have the sand on one side and the chalk on the other side. If you look closely inside my test tube. Alright, you notice I have sand on one side and chalk on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I would add more water okay now obviously my my sand is more heavier in terms of uh, the weight and you notice what I'm doing? I'm, I'm gradually tilting, okay? I'm gradually uh, tilting the test tube, and as I do that, uh, because the sand is more dense, it tends to separate to one side, and the chalk that is la uh, less dense tend to continue to float in the water that I have there. So what I'm going to do is I'll get another test tube and I will gradually pour that chalk mixture out. Okay. So here I am using the whole idea of uh, difference in density of the material that the sand is more dense than the chalk particles. It tends to float while the sand particles tend to sink to the bottom. Okay, I will I'll continue to do this and gradually get rid of the chalk. Remember, in here I have, um, so I can transfer this there because that's still part of my chalk. Okay, I'm gonna repeat this again. All right, so notice I have my chalk on that side. I'm just going to gently scoop it out. So again, I'm, I'm making use of the physical property of uh, density. I know that my sand is more dense than the chalk. So when I added water, the sand sunk to the bottom while the chalk uh, floats around in the water and then I can just gradually get rid of the chalk. So uh, if you look in there you would notice I have mainly the sand. So uh, remember we started off with the sand being dry so uh, I'm gonna be placing I'm gonna be placing this in the in the oven to dry so I still have some uh, chalk particles there I'm gonna 
try to get them all out. There we go. Right there. So I have all my chalk, and now I'm left with um, I'm left with sand. So that's sand in that beaker there. So I will be placing that in the oven to dry. So I'm going to set it aside while. All right. So right here we have um, a mixture of our chalk and salt. So remember, the salt can dissolve readily in water. Uh, so I want the salt to dissolve much more faster. So I'm gonna warm that mixture there. All right, so while I'm heating it up to warm, I'm gonna prepare my free, uh, my filtration setup. So for the filtration setup, we need um, filter paper. Okay. So uh, the filter paper, there is a special technique for folding your filter paper. So first you fold in. This is the filter paper, first fold in half, and then in quarter, and then you open up one, one quarter of it, and we're gonna place that, we're gonna place that right here, I have, um, I have a funnel and my ring stand. Okay, so I need um, a, a beaker to collect my filtrates. Okay, so uh, I place I place this in the funnel and then place my funnel in my ring stand. 